I'm Chris Chaput asking you, what's that and why should you care? Uh, this is going to be a SolidWorks rendering video. I've made this truck uh, at the shop, got the parts done. I haven't yet put it on a board and ridden it yet. That's going to be a separate video. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. And uh, it's a TKP, meaning a traditional kingpin truck. Um, it has uh, a weird looking square hanger uh, bolted onto it, some extra holes, some bearings, bushings, all the, uh, the standard fare here. This is a, a 30 degree one. I have different uh, base plate configurations. So a 35 degree base plate, um, 40 degree base plate, which although it's a lot of steering for the rear, it could be a rear base plate, but it's more like a front um, base plate. I'm going to skip over the 45 for now and go to the um, 50 degree uh, base plate just to show some of the different angles of attack that you're going to be fine. And before I go to that 45, I'm going to take you behind the scenes, show you a little bit about what the uh, makeup of the uh, hanger itself is. I call this two-part hanger system uh, a hanger top and a hanger bottom. Some people may identify this with just as the bushing seat and the pivot, but that's kind of a mouthful. So this is the hanger bottom. Here's the hanger top. You may notice these cylindrical features on the hanger bottom. They actually serve three purposes. One is when you put this down, it like kind of puts the hanger in the right um, position because there are these um, cylindrical holes uh, on each of the four sides of this uh, hanger top. The other reason, perhaps more importantly from a structural integrity standpoint of view, is that if this is just a flat plane and that is just a flat plane, then the only thing that you have um, holding that thing together and preventing it from either twisting or um, wanting to slide forward or backwards or left or right are the bolts themselves. And so they're more likely to shear when they're the only uh, game in town. When you've got these cylinders um, and this is slid down over it, now the thing can't twist, it can't slide to the left, can't slide to the right, front or back. So a lot greater strength than that. Lastly, it gives you a little extra material to thread this. Um, so if you want to have a lot of threads, um, this is only um, aluminum steel um, screws, but uh, an aluminum uh, body here. It's just going to give you more meat to bite into. So you're, um, you're down here, you put those down. Now all of a sudden it's like a one piece uh, hanger. Um, there are some axle position holes here, and I'm going to uh, show you what that is like. I think if I, now I don't know why my, um, I have these circles on there, you can kind of see them. Um, but these circles represent uh, what I'll call kind of a, a rotational um, position of these holes. You got to imagine right now that there is an axis that goes across this right in the middle of this square here. So if you do that and then you see me rotating this hanger top around that axis, I do it just because it's kind of a, gives you a better, it's just a quicker way of showing what it is that I'm up to. So let's go back to this one here. And um, all of these models that I've been showing you, you know, rotate back and forth at whatever steering angle it is. And it's also um, worthy of a quick mention that the pivot um, axis goes straight into the middle of the middle of the bushing seats, like right in the middle of the kingpin between the top and bottom uh, bushing. And the steering axis and the pivot axis are uh, coincident or collinear. Um, they're one and the same. So there isn't the case that, you know, the pivots like jacked up out of sync with the steering axis. That can happen and all it does is make a kind of a weird motion through the pivot cup. It'll still steer along the steering axis, but it's just kind of a thing that um, a lot of truck guys don't do anything to prevent because it's, at the end of the day, it doesn't really make 
all that big a difference. So all of these have bearings on them and all of these pivot. The 45, not so much. And the reason I, um, I actually kind of locked down the 45 so that it doesn't steer is because I'm gonna um, show more about the intent of this truck in the first place, which is how this thing um, moves. So if I grab this hanger and I go like this, um, that's kind of representing taking the bolts off, turning this thing 90 degrees, and re-bolting it down. So right now what you can see is that I've got this hanger in um, a low position and close to the um, bushings. But if I clamp it up here, now it's high and close to the bushings. If I do this a little bit more, it's going to be far away from the kingpin and the bushings and up high or down here. Now, if I put the axles into this other circle, which isn't positioned as extremely, you know, um, close to the corner as this one, it's going to rotate on a, a smaller circle, giving me four different axle positions. But as you can see, if I kind of do this, um, you know, that hanger, or sorry, the axle, is really moving on, um, on a circle. So if this was an octagon or something, um, you know, uh, might not be that um, uh, much surface area down here to mount it on, but I'd have eight different positions. I'd have these positions in the middle, but four um, extreme positions and then four less extreme positions are gonna give you an awful lot to kind of um, play with here. So by the time I go from the outside of this washer feature to the outside of the other washer feature, I think I have this as a 120 millimeter uh, truck overall, a little less uh, than five inches for you uh, people not into the, uh, the metric system. But it's a prototype truck. It's basically made to answer the question, how does this thing ride with a lot of rake, but close to the kingpin? What happens if you, you know, want to swing this thing um, you know, out a little more. So we got a lot of rake and um, a greater distance uh, from the uh, uh, the kingpin. You know, there's another version of this or an extended version of this where um, the axle positions can go in line with the kingpin. So, you know, somewhere way over here, um, I probably have to lay um, a weird split axle configuration on top of this uh, hanger bottom but you know maybe put a mounting screw back here have like a three-point system or or just one in front and one in back and maintain that two-point system um that's for people who believe that there's a lot of magic when you put the axle in line with the kingpin personally my theory on that is just that you're making what's in essence more like an rkp you're putting the axle away from the pivot cup it's loading the bottom bushing more and it's more stable. It's not really magic that it's in line with the kingpin. It's just gonna give you a more stable um, position. Also things with less rake is gonna be more stable, but um, in any event, these are more like the Bennett, you know, hijacker type trucks where you're looking at a, um, you know, a lot of rake and um, a TKP design. So that axle is, you know, very much over the, um, uh, the pivot cup and should steer pretty well. So if you guys have an interest in ultimately seeing how this rides, look at for the next um, uh, video. Um, I will do my best to get some footage. I've got a uh, 360, an Insta 361R um, camera, uh, selfie stick. So I should be able to drop that over the front as long as I'm careful not to drag it on the ground, I should be good. Um, or maybe even try just, you know, bolting the thing on. I could make some sort of a clever bracket. But, uh, you know, the bottom line is if we don't actually go out and ride this thing, then who cares? Uh, I guess I care a little bit about um, the theory of how these things are going to work. It's a clunky truck. It's not very um, pretty, but you see what it's designed to do. So stay tuned. Let me know what you think. And uh, if uh, this COVID thing goes away and... Uh, you wear a mask <laughs> and you're in Huntington Beach and you want to try it out, then let me know. Or if you want to buy a set, you know, hell, I'll make them for 100 bucks a set. Sounds reasonable if somebody's really interested in 
doing the same experiment as I am. abeck11 at gmail.com. Okay, Chris Chappett, out.